Hello everybody, this is me and today I have a vlog for you guys. So today's video is all going to be about things that I need to prepare and get ready for the summer. So Mickey at the moment, something that I've been doing a lot recently this summer is his nose. As you can tell, it's pink and it gets burnt quite easily so we need to put on his morning sun cream. But first we might need to give his nostrils a little bit of a clean. I don't know what he's been getting up to but his nostrils are very dirty. So should we get you ready for the day? Yeah, do you want some scratches? Am I the scratching post? <laughs> Am I the scratching post? The Mickey scratching post? Oh, you love your forehead scratch. Mickey, you've only just woken up. There's no need to be falling asleep again. Sleepy boy. So Mickey isn't the biggest fan of having his sun cream put on in the morning, so I have to put his head colour on just so um, I make sure that his nose doesn't go where it shouldn't. So that's I'm just going to clean our little nostrils, mate, because they are absolutely disgusting. That's only one wipe. Horrible. There we go. Good boy. As you guys can see, Mickey has a very pink nose that has very little to no pigment at all. So he doesn't really have that much apart from his little hairs here to protect him. So we have to put sun cream on so he don't get burnt, do we? So if we look over at Casper's... Casper has a grey little nose, so he's a little bit more protected against the sun. Apart from his little freckles, but usually they don't get too burnt because... in the Well, sometimes he has a moustache, he doesn't have too much of a moustache now, it's gone. But um, yeah, usually that bit is in his shadow, so it doesn't get too burnt compared to Mickey's. Okay, so now it's sun cream time. Mickey usually isn't a fan of it, so maybe that's why he's giving it a lick attack. But um, the sun cream that we use is Factor 50, and it's also waterproof, because Mickey likes to dunk his nose in the water trough, and all the sun cream goes off it. So um, hopefully this will protect him for the majority of the day if he doesn't get it in mud or anything like that. Because we don't know where you put your little snoot, do we? Yeah, it goes everywhere. So this is his favourite part, as you can tell. He's not going to like it that much, but it's for his own good. Okay, Mickey. I'm sorry. There we go. Just put a little bit there. Oh, what a good boy. And then I put it on the side of his mouth. Okay, okay. <laughs> like so. So I don't rub it in too much. Just let it soak for a bit. Yes. And then I just have one more little dollop put on the other side because although um, the majority of his nose like at the front here gets burnt, you can't forget about the sides here. There we go. There we go. And then I'll just rub this in. Oh, what a good boy. He's definitely got used to having sun cream put on him over the years. Yeah. I always find when I put sun cream on Mickey, it looks like he's got like horse foundation on. It gets rid of all of his like <laughs> blemishes and stuff and it makes it look like he's just got like a white nose <laughs> hey yeah try not to get in any in your mouth or in your nostrils but we don't want you to get burnt do we no just wipe it on there so i do put quite a bit on because over the day if i go to college or something um i won't be at home to top it up so it just makes sure that if some does wear off during the day, he still doesn't get there. Hey, got a little bit stuck in your little horse moustache. <laughs> okay, I think that's pretty good. Now I'll just put a little bit here. And then, can't forget your little chinny chin chin. There we go, Mick, you're ready to play in the sun. And now I'm just going to put a teeny bit on Casper, just because he has a tiny bit where he has his little freckles, just so that bit doesn't get burnt, because it is really sunny today and the UV rays are quite strong. There we go. There we go, good boy. Oh, they've both been such good boys today having their sun cream on. There we go, little freckly boy. Good lads. <laughs> So now both boys have had their sun cream on, it's now time to put their fly masks on. So this helps protect Mickey's eyes against the UV light because he's got blue eyes. They're very sensitive to the sun, but also um, it helps them stop the flies going on their eyes and irritating them. Yeah. So it's now time to put his fly mask on. So Mickey's fly mask 
is a little bit dirty, I'm not gonna lie to you, because um, he is a little bit cheeky sometimes. He'll leave it in the field, he'll leave it on the hedge, and it has been out during the night in the rain, so it is a little bit dirty. It has been in the washing machine so many times, but it's just permanently stained. So we might need to get you a new fly mask sometime, but it still works, it hasn't got any holes in. It's just a little bit tatty, isn't it, Mick? But, <laughs> okay, so before, he's giving it a lick attack. Okay, so before I put Mick out in the field, I'm also gonna put on some fly spray, just because, um, <laughs> stop it, Mickey, okay. Oh no, guys, he's giving the fly, the fly repellent a lick attack. <laughs> Mickey, you can't eat it. So I'm just going to put this on. Um, I'm not going to put this rug on today just because it is really hot, but there aren't many flies out. But I'm just going to put a little bit of spray on just in case the flies do come out later. So, time to put your little fly spray on, Mick. Mickey is very good with sprays. Casper is a little bit more timid, but Mickey's absolutely fine with it. There we go, just a few spritz. Oh, he smells gorgeous now. You smell really nice, yeah? Should we go do Casper now? Yeah, no more lick attacks on the fly spray. Okay, your turn now, Casp. Pop your little ears through. And do it up. I always like to poke his little forelock through because there's a little hole for it. So the forelock can also act as like stopping the flies going on them so if they have like shake and swish it around it can stop the flies going on them as well so i like to poke the little foil box out and give him a little spray as well oh what a good boy when we first got casper he absolutely hated being sprayed with sprays but now he's so good there we go and you smell absolutely lovely as well so should we put you both out in the field now do we have a little play good boy So Mickey and Casper have both had a massive roll. They're both, Mickey, you've got so much dust and grass in your mane. You were looking so pretty before. You were so nice and clean. Hey, it's all dusty. Oh, Mickey. <laughs> In this month's issue of Pony Magazine, they have a really good article on beating the heat. So we've already done the first thing, which is protecting the horses against the sun, so putting the sun cream on. The next thing was protecting them against the flies. They've got their fly masks on and they've had their fly spray. And the next thing is making sure that they stay hydrated. So now it's time to fill up their water buckets, make sure that they're both nice and clean and that they have lots of fresh water. As you would have seen, Mickey's just had a big drink from the water trough and the field that I'm currently in is actually the horse's winter paddock because we are letting them in their summer paddock but only for a few hours a day just because there's so much grass in there. We don't want Mickey and Casper to get laminitis because horses can get that if they eat too much fresh grass. 
So now we're going to check the water off because it's another really important thing you need to check in the summer because sometimes the mechanism can stop working or if there's a hole in the trough the horses can have no water so it's always really good to check that regularly. So obviously the horses have been using this water trough during the winter so I'm just going to show you how I usually check it. So if I open up the top lid here it works a little bit like a toilet, so um, this little ball, if I just press down on it, it should make a noise of water coming out, so. So that's how I know that it's definitely working. So what happens is when the horses drink and the water goes down, the ball goes down, which then opens up the tap and lets water in, so it automatically fills up. So that's all working, I can put the lid back on. Also, because it's outdoors, there are a couple of spider friends that have made their home in here, so we'll let them um, be under there. Okay, so I probably do this about every two days, clean out their water, just because it gets dirty so quickly. Especially with the warm weather, the algae grows really quickly, and also there are birds that drink out of here and other wildlife, so it does get pretty manky pretty quickly, so it's now time to give it another clean. So while the water trough is filling up with water, I just thought I'd talk about the charity update article in Pony Magazine because they also have a bit with Casper and I doing my hackathon all about the Brook charity and they also have a little bit about World Horse Welfare and their sculpture trail. So a lot of you would have known that a couple of weeks back I painted a horse called Primrose for World Horse Welfare and um, Primrose, as you would have seen some photos and things about her story in that video, and she's actually given birth to a horse called Teddy, a little colt. So I just thought update you guys because I really like listening and hearing about what she's getting up to and he is so cute he's a little palomino colt if you would like to see the horse that I painted it's actually at Glenda Spooner farm at one of the world horse welfare rehoming centers which is where one of the sculpture trails is held so now it's time to go and check the water and see if it's been filled up seems all nice and clean, they've got all their water topped up. So now I've done their water trough, the next thing I'm going to do is check their field for poisonous plants, especially this time of year when it's coming up to summer, a lot of poisonous plants can start growing in your horse's field. So the main poisonous plant that we get over here is called ragwort, you can usually see it by its flowers that are bright yellow. So I'm going to go for a little walk around the field and try and pick up any of the ragwort. I'm going to be using gloves as well because it is toxic, so it's not very good for you to touch either. Either. so I'm gonna be picking up some of the leaves obviously the flowers haven't flowered yet because it is a little bit early on in the season but it's best if you can identify the plant to be able to get it out of your horse's field as quickly as possible Okay, so I found our first ragwort plant of the day that I'm going to be getting rid of. The reason why I like to do it at the early stage is because I like to do it before they flower, so it means that next year I'll have less to do because it means that less seeds will be spread over the field and it means that less ragwort plants I'll have to pick up next year. So as you can see by what it looks like, it is quite distinctive. You can see by the design on its um, leaves, it's a little bit different to the plants that you usually see. So I'm now going to pick it up um, with my gloves to protect myself because it is poisonous to horses and to humans if you do touch it quite a lot because it is toxic to horses livers usually they don't eat it at this sort of stage but if it dries out and if it's the only thing that's in the horse's field to eat especially when the grass is really mown down they can decide to eat it sometimes so time to pick it up Okay guys, I've now just finished up picking up all the ragwort. Although they are a little bit smaller and they're a bit more difficult to see, I always like to get them when they're small, it's easier to pick them up rather than when they're massive. But also, um, I always try and 
get all the ragwort that's not even in the horse's field, like outside the horse's field, because if the ragwort outside does flower, the seeds can go into the horse's field, which again isn't great. And also I like to use my handy dandy shovel here to um, pick them up so then I get the whole roots rather than just the top of the plant so hopefully it won't regrow there next year so I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video also my t-shirt you might have spotted exciting things coming soon um, if you're new or have not done so already be sure to subscribe thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you all next time bye Look at that on the camera. Look at that on the camera. Look at that on the camera. Hello. Oh, it's got a slobber on. Lovely. <laughs>